Hi there guys, Justin here again. In today's video, what we're going to be doing is completely optimizing our CPU. Um, and what that does is we're going to be removing any RAM cycles, CPU cycles that we don't need because we want to maximize performance and anything that runs in the background that's not necessary cause latency, uh, cause less CPU performance. We're going to get rid of all of that stuff. So pack your bags, get on the train, let's go. Right guys, as we get started, you're going to need to do this. Go into your browser, go to YouTube. If you haven't subscribed to my channel just yet, I'm looking to hit a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. As you can see, I've got a like a few to go, so I need some help here. But guys, um, so in the description of the video, there's going to be a link. Click that link, and that's going to take you to my Google Drive, to my CPU optimization folder. So when you click the link, it's going to look like this. Just go ahead and download all these programs. So it's WinAero Tweaker, Throttle Stop, uh, uh, Latest, which is a Windows Privacy Dashboard, Install Power Plan, Game DVR Registry Tweaks, and then also the Bits and Highs Performance. So just go ahead and download all those. And then once you've downloaded them, it will probably be in your downloads. Just create a little file uh, on your desktop called CPU Optimization. And then copy all those downloads into the CPU Optimization folder. And from here, we're going to get started. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to load the bits and highest performance power plan. And that, that's basically exactly the same as ultimate performance. But as you know, in the latest versions of Windows, they've changed the, the power scheme a bit. You don't have balance, uh, power saver, and high performance anymore. It's once you click on here, it normally gives you a sliding scale from uh, battery saver, balanced, and then high performance. I don't have it. I've already loaded the bits and highest performance power plan. But uh, so that's why you see you only have one power plan and that's normally the balance power plan now. So what we're going to do is we're going to be replacing the balance power plan, the bits and highest performance power plan. As mentioned, that is exactly the same as ultimate performance. It's just got a different name. So what we're going to do is just click into your CPU optimization folder, select bits and highest performance, control, and then select install power plan as well. Cut that. And we're going to place that on the desktop okay and it's important you place on the desktop and i'll show you what so now just edit your install power plan click run and then over here and the reason we're placing it on the desktop because you, as you can see the script over here um it will run but it has to be on the desktop so we're going to change administrator to your computer's name so this over here so just go to your file options or uh, this folder and then go to C drive, go to users and then whatever you got public and then you got your computer's name. So whatever your computer's name is, in my case it's Justin G15. So I'm going to change administrator to Justin G15. Okay, and then go ahead and save. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to so now when you run this it's going to install the bits and highs performance power plan over balanced in your power options so just go ahead and click run as administrator and then as you can see instead of balance now you got the bits and highs performance power plan so once that's done you can go ahead and delete these over here and then just go to change plan settings and then all these settings over here just go never 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 change advanced power settings and then guys if you don't have all these um all these extra settings there is a way to add because i know in some cases you don't have pci express and then you've got less options in uh processor power, processor power management uh, you, you might not have usb settings blah 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 in the video, I'm going to put a link to other video that I did, and it goes, it just shows you how to add in all those extra power settings if you are missing them. Because when they updated Windows, I think since 21 H1, they actually did away with this. So, if you want to find a way to go ahead and uh, add all those extra settings into advanced settings again, 
um, you, uh, you can just click on that link and then you can watch that video. But guys, if you've got all these options, what you're going to do is just follow now. Wireless adapter settings, power saving mode, we don't want any power savings because obviously you want CPU to function at its maximum performance. So just go select maximum performance, maximum performance, sleep, we don't want any sleep so just go never, never. USB settings, USB select settings, just go disabled, disabled. PCI Express, link state, power management, we don't want any power savings, so off and off. Processor power management, minimum processor state put on 100 and 100. System cooling policy, go active and active. And then maximum processor state, obviously 100 and 100. And then on display, turn off display after never and never. And adaptive display, we run it off. Because guys, we're not looking to save power, we're looking to optimize our CPU for the maximum performance. So guys, that will bring you to the end of step one. Right guys, next step, we're gonna update Windows completely. Uh, make sure all the updates are installed, restart our system, and then pause updates until the options are grayed out, because we don't want Windows update running in the background, and in so doing, stealing our CPU cycles. So, Windows key settings, update and security, so i've actually disabled windows update so it's not going to look like this for you it's going to say install or uh, uh, look for latest updates just go ahead and look for your latest updates it's going to give you a list go ahead and install them and then once they've all installed restart your system and then once your, once your system's been restarted it's installed all the updates just go on pause updates and just click pause updates until this option is grayed out and when once that option is grayed out, you've now ensured that your system is up to date. It's not going to be running in the background. It's not going to be stealing your CPU cycles. All right, that brings us to our next section, which is going to be to optimize Windows settings. So go to your Windows key, uh, press settings. So all these settings over here, we're going to be disabling any background processes and any settings that you don't need because it's stealing from your CPU cycles. And it's also the way that Windows captures your data and sends it to Microsoft. So we want to limit that ability and optimize our CPU. So first and foremost, go to update and security. Update, we already dealt with that. Delivery optimization, just switch this off. Windows security, I have Windows Defender disabled. I will cover that in a later step in this video. So for you, for those of you that, that prioritize security, just leave Windows security as is. For those of you like me that don't care about security that you really just chasing performance as mentioned in a later step in the video i'll show you how to go about disabling that and just to let you know i don't go to dodgy sites i don't have any security issues um i've had windows defender disabled for like over a year now and i've had no issues so if you want to find out how to disable that just follow it in the later section in this video Backup, just leave as is, troubleshoot, leave as is, recovery, uh, leave as is, activation, that's your baby, find my device, nothing. For developers, just make sure these are all switched off, Windows inside a program, that's up to you if you want to do that. Settings, privacy, so this is where Microsoft captures your data, or Windows captures your data and sends it to Microsoft. So we want to limit Windows' ability to capture your data. So we're going to be switching all these settings off, um later in the video there is windows privacy dashboard that does aid in switching these off and then also removing certain settings that windows doesn't give you the functionality to do but i'll cover that later so in general just switch all these off off inking off diagnostics and feedback switch all this off activity history switch all this off and then clear uh, location just go ahead and switch all these off camera I, I obviously i record my screen and i make videos so i leave this on in fact i think it's best practice just to leave camera and microphone leave those on or leave them as is so camera leave as is microphone leave as is voice activation just go ahead and switch all these off notifications switch all that off account enter switch all that off contact switch all that off calendar switch all that off phone call switch all this off call history switch all this off email all off tasks all off messaging all off 
radio is all off, other devices all off, background apps now, any CPU optimization guide, if they know what they're talking about, they're going to say to disable background apps. So go ahead and switch off background apps, it's going to switch all this off. So obviously we don't want any processes in the background that steal your CPU cycles. So that's what we've been doing with all these other settings. But this one's a big one. Switch all your background apps off. App diagnostics, go ahead and switch it off. Automatic, uh, leave it as is. Documents off. Pictures off. Videos off. File system off. Brings us to the next section which is search. Just go ahead and off, don't filter add all content. We don't want any blocks or any impediments that's going to limit our performance or whatever you want to do on your computer. Microsoft account off, work in school off, history off, clear device search history, click on that. Searching windows, no, it's nothing to do there. Ease of access, so display, just make sure your display is 100%, show animations in windows off. People say transparency in Windows uh, causes uh, performance loss. It, I don't find that it does. And it also just makes everything look a little bit nicer and contrasty. Automatically hide scroll bars in Windows. Just keep that on. Show desk, desktop background image. This is this over here. So just leave that as is. Mouse pointer. I'm going to touch on mouse settings just now. So just leave that. Text cursor. Nothing to do there. Magnifier. Just, just uh, untick all of these and just make sure that smooth edges is just ticked. But everything else you can untick. Color filters, just switch off color filters. If it's on, it shouldn't be on. High contrast, leave, narrator. So just go ahead and untick all of these. Uh, just make sure all those are unticked. Audio, obviously 100%. Turn off mono audio. Closed captions, just nothing to do here. Speech off, keyboard, make sure all these are off. Mouse off, our control, just leave as is. Okay, gaming. So I did cover this in my in video optimization, but I might, this is part of settings, so I might as well go through it. Just switch your Xbox, uh, Xbox game bar off. Captures. Captures, just go ahead and why do I have settings on here? So just switch this off. Switch this off. Game mode, leave that on. Graphic settings. So all the games that you have on your system, just search for them. And then once they're loaded over here, just click on it and then options and set it to high performance. Okay, so just browse for all the games that you have and make sure that they're all set to high performance. And then, also just make sure that hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is on. And if it's off, switch it on, restart your computer and then come back to graphics. Xbox networking, you can just leave that. Time and language, obviously you can just set up to how you like it, your time, your language, whatever. Region that you can fill in those details. Language, just leave as is, speech leave as is. Uh, accounts, these are all your babies, so I'm not going to touch on that. Apps, this is an important section. Apps and features. You want to go through this list. Everything that you don't use, you want to get rid of it because it's it's causing uh, your CPU to create background processes for apps that you don't use and it's going to kill your performance. So just go through this list and everything that you don't specifically use, get rid of it. Because this is going to cause back, it's going to cause processes to run in the background. It's going to cause extra latency. So every app that you don't use, just go ahead and delete it. And then for the apps that you can't delete that you want to get rid of, we're in this privacy dashboard. Uh, I'm going to touch on that a little bit later, but you can get rid of some extra apps that you don't use. Default options or default apps. Yeah, so just change it to whichever you want. If you, uh, if you don't want to use Media Player, just uh, then you can select VLC Media Player if you've got that installed. If you don't want to use Chrome, you want to use a different browser, just change that, but it's pretty straightforward. Offline Maps, I've, I've switched off all offline maps. It's something I don't use and I don't want any CPU cycles dedicated to that. Apps or websites, nothing there. Video Playback, I always just set this for optimized for video quality. 
and then start up importantly you don't want any programs to start up when you boot your system because that's going to cause apps to open up that you don't use and it's going to use your cpu cycles so just go ahead and switch all that off personalization really guys it's up to you like i mentioned earlier i like my um i like using uh by transparency it just makes things look a little bit better but you can go through all these settings and set it to your liking network and internet phone you can just make sure that everything's set off over here devices okay so bluetooth and other devices if you use bluetooth leave it on if you don't just go ahead and disable this or switch it off Printers and scanners, if you don't use a printer, just make sure that all this is switched off. Mouse, so we're gonna go to additional mouse options over here. So, leave this as is, pointers, leave this as is, pointer options, we're gonna dis oh, untick enhance pointer precision, click apply, press OK, and then we can exit this. Touchpad, just leave as is. Um, if this is ticked, leave touchpad on when mouse is connected, just untick this. Because obviously when you're playing games and you're using WASD, you might uh, click or touch on your touchpad. It causes uh, unused movement or un unnecessary movement in your game. Just go ahead and untick the touchpad on when mouse is connected. Typing, just go ahead and untick everything over here. Pen, windows and ink, just if anything is selected, you just untick it. Autoplay. I don't use that, so I just make sure it's off. USB off and off, and then finally brings us to system. So display, make sure that your display is 100%. Uh, you can just go through these settings. Sound, nothing to do. Uh, notifications and apps, just leave it. Uh, power and sleep already dealt with power. Just make sure all this is never, never, never. Battery. I actually want to switch this off and let it put there never storage nothing to do here tablet never use tablet mode don't switch to tablet mode multitasking just make sure this is all off you don't want to snap on this not using a tablet projecting to this pc nothing to do there shared experiences let's switch it off clipboard make sure all this is untick remote desktop nothing to do there and a bite this is just going to tell you about your, your desktop and if you do have a high refresh rate uh, high refresh screen what you want to do is go to display sorry i didn't touch on that just go to display and go to advanced display settings and just make sure that your the maximum refresh rate is selected because like quite often by default at 60 hertz just go ahead and select your the highest refresh rate available and we are done with settings thank god this section took me forever i had to do, redo it 10 million times all right guys for our next step we're going to be going to our cp optimization folder i'm going to install windows privacy dashboard so this latest over here just pull it to your desktop close this off and then you can either extract this or are you 7-zip just open archive and then just pull wpd to your desktop then you can delete this so i've already got windows privacy dashboard on my computer so i'm going to delete this but for your purposes open that up and just wait for it to open it's a very cool little app this so you know in our settings earlier we uh, our settings over here privacy it's just an extension of this it just disables all the all the privacy as well as enables a couple of extra features which are very cool so we're going to go to privacy and then just go ahead and untick all of this make sure all of this is off untick all of that make sure all of that is off untick all of this make sure all of that is off obviously i've optimized this already task scheduler just untick all of these options make sure all of those are off in local group policy just untick all of these uh, if you want windows defend antivirus active don't untick it 
anyways it comes back on irrespective app permissions let winners apps access your camera let winners apps access your microphone leave those on everything else you can switch off like i did and then services just go and unselect all of these and then windows update um there's another way to to block windows update so this doesn't really matter and then you just hit apply and then that's gonna switch all of these off for you and then in blocker just block telemetry so you click on it so let me just show you so telemetry is going to look like this you just select it and then it's blocked e extra just go ahead and block it and then remember i told you that i block windows update so if you want windows update block just click on this and windows update is blocked very cool so there's nothing running in the background right and then for apps you're going to see uh, I've only got like a couple of apps open here or a couple of apps still here but there's a list of 23 apps that you don't actually you don't actually need all of them so just make sure that these apps remain everything else you can delete so you, everything that you're not going to use you just select it select it and then you then you click on delete selected so just make sure to keep Intel Graphics Command Center Microsoft Photos Microsoft Store because if you delete Microsoft Store, next time you load an NVIDIA driver, you're not going to be able to, to have the NVIDIA control panel. So please leave Microsoft Store. Leave your audio, leave store experience host. When there's calculator, you can delete that. I, I for my benchmarks of games and, and performance, I use Microsoft Calculator, Microsoft Camera, keep that, and Microsoft or Windows Voice Recorder, keep that. Everything else, guys, you can select and you can delete it. It's basically like apps over here, all the apps that you don't use, there's certain things that you can't delete. Um, so now Windows Privacy Dashboard, all those apps that you don't want, you can delete it from here. But guys, just to reiterate, please keep these apps. Don't delete these apps. Intel Graphics Command Center, Microsoft Photos, or actually you can delete that if you don't want it. Microsoft Store, keep it. NVIDIA control panel, keep it. Realtek audio control, keep it. Uh, store experience host, keep it. Windows calculator, keep it. Windows camera and Windows voice recorder. Everything else you can select it and delete select it. Very cool app this, guys. Right, for the next step, what I want you to do is go to your CPU optimization folder. And now we're going to use WinAero Tweaker. So just pull it over there, close this off. And then same as before, extract it or 7-zip it, open archive, and then just pull this to your desktop. And you can delete this. All right, so guys, then just right-click it, run as administrator, install it to your C drive. And then once it's installed, open it up. I've already got it installed, so I'm not going to do that. So just open up one area tweaker. And the reason I included this is because they wanted uh, not all of it but one or two features does help optimize your cpu and above and beyond that this is just a freaking awesome little program i highly recommend everybody and anybody uses this program always <laughs> so i'm just gonna i've done countless videos on this so i'm just gonna run through the settings very quickly because this video is getting long so appearance you can leave as is advanced appearance settings just leave all this behavior so ads and unwanted apps, just go and disable ads in Windows and go ahead and tick all of these. Okay. Disable error shake, just make sure that's disabled. Disable error snap, disable that. Disable app lookup install. These all processes you don't want running in the background. Disable and automatic maintenance. Uh, just go ahead and click on disable MRT from installing. Disable smart screen. So just go ahead, dish, 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 select that. Disable when this update, I've already got that disabled. Error reporting, leave, hibernation options. I'm going to be doing registry tweaks just now so you can leave this alone. Keep time now, cache, yes. Show menu delay, just pull this all the way to zero. This just makes things look a lot snappy on your desktop. So when you normally there's a 400 millisecond delay. So when you open or close something, 
now there's no delay. So just makes things look a lot, a lot faster on your desktop. Oh no, not that. Right, so then power throttling, disable power throttling, but I'm gonna be covering that in my regenerator tweaks. Uh, let's go. Split threshold. So this is something that definitely affects your CPU. So just set, uh, just click on this set above RAM reduce amount of SVOs.exe. So click on that and then it's going to set it. So whether you've got 8 gigs or 16 gigs or 32 gigs, it's going to set the split threshold for service host in byte size above the RAM amount of the RAM is in your system. So what is this? So this is a very old feature in Windows where uh, people, we used to run Windows on four gigs. So they used to put all the services into packets, but obviously as Windows has gotten newer and people use eight gigs, 16 gigs, 12 gigs, 20 gigs, whatever, you don't need this anymore. So by setting this, up, uh, setting this above the RAM amount, what it does is in Task Manager, if you go down, so now you see all these processes. So I've done this. Normally, they, if you have a look, you, you're probably going to see millions and millions of entries for this. So what this is going to do, it's going to halve the service host packages. So it's going to free. It's so we already did services earlier. This is going to like um, it's going to minimize your Windows Windows processes even more. Trust me, guys. It's a nice little feature. So just go ahead and set above RAM amounts. Okay, nothing to do there. And don't have to do anything there. Desktop and taskbar just leave as is. I like to put my Windows version on the desktop, so I could click that. Wallpaper quality doesn't really make a difference, but you can just drag it to 100. Uh, is anything else? No, not there. Context menu, this is very cool. So, in the context menu, where is it? No. Sorry. Yeah, run with priority. So just go add run with priority to the context menu. So what that is, this is the context menu over here. So now if you want, if there's a game that you can't set to high priority to run in high priority always, it's a very cool feature because now what you can do is you can go to your games and uncharted for me because it runs off one executable runs two games i can't set it to our priority to run in a high priority automatically by regedit so now because i selected add run with priority to the context menu so now i just go to the executable and right click and then yeah run with priority and i can choose low below normal normal above normal high or real-time priority so that's a very cool little feature over there so just go ahead and run with priority, add run with priority to the context menu. And then there are a couple of extra things you can do in here. Like I like I like to disable game bar presence writer. So I go ahead and add tech ownership to the context menu. But if you want that, I'm gonna include a link to my full win error tweaker video. So you can click on that and you can just have a look at that. And then there's some extra settings in here you can do, but I'm not going to go through that. This video is already very long. So if you want to see those extra features, just click on that video. I'm going to put it, I'm going to put a link to that in the description of this video, and then you can run through all the full settings. And guys, when error tweaker is such a cool little program. Right. For the next step, go to your CPU optimization folder, throttle stop over here, just drag it to your desktop. Obviously, this is for people that don't have throttle stop installed just as a bit. Um, then either extract it or seven zip it. And then a throttle stop if you distract your desktop. Boom. Delete this. And then, guys, I've already got this installed, so I'm going to delete this as well. Yeah. But for those of you that don't have throttle stop, just double click it. It's going to give you a warning message saying it can be dangerous if you don't apply the settings properly. That's fine. Just double click it. And then once you're in throttle stop, first thing you want to do is uh, it's going to say turn on. Click on turn on and save. Because obviously if it's not turned on, any of the settings you apply here are not going to make any difference. <laughs> right. So guys, what you want to do is make sure that disable turbo is not ticked. Be pro shot, untick it. 
C1E is a power saving feature and ticket. Uh, press save again. And then, importantly, in Fiverr, this is where you go about undervolting your CPU. So you see on my CPU core, I've undervolted by 165 millivolts on my CPU cache. I've uh, undervolted by 99.6 millivolts. However, guys, there are certain of you where unlock adjustable voltage is going to be grayed out. Do not despair. I've got a, I've got a method for you. So in the description of the video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link. So just give me a second here, guys. I'm put a link over here to a video that shows you how to unlock undervolting. It says you how to undervolt a Dell G15 with a lock bias. But this method works on, I'd say, about 85 to 90% of Intel CPUs. So guys, if you've got an Intel CPU that is 11th gen and older, this method will work for you. So just, if you want to unlock or unlock undervolting, just watch this video. That will be in the description of the video. So, once you've unlocked undervolting, just go onto the internet see what other people the same cpu and the same laptop as you what stable undervolts they have applied and then work of that and then under go, go ahead and undervolt your cpu what's going to happen is you're going to experience low temperatures and what that does is it's going to prevent your cpu from throttling because when you throttle you actually lose performance so it, it might not make your cpu faster per se but it's going to prevent your cpu from throttling so guys just watch that link if we can't unlock adjustable voltage it'll show you how to unlock that all right guys for the next step what you're going to be just doing is disabling any services that you don't need that don't need to run in the background so go to your windows key just type in services and then here we go so yeah what you can do is you can stop a service and then you can go to properties and you can choose it to be disabled manual and automatic so what i'm going to do is in the description of this video i'm going to put in services safe to disable in 22h2 so if you're on windows 11 or windows 10 22h2 these services are safe to disable in 22h2 if you're on Windows 21H2 or 21H1, either Windows 11 or Windows 10, there's going to be a link that you can click on and it's going to take you to one of my older videos and it's going to show you all the services safe to disable in 21H2 or 21H1. And the reason you want to go ahead and disable services is because in Task Manager, okay, I've got a whole bunch of tabs open here. I've got my browser, I've got OBS, blah, 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 blah. But normally my memory is down to 12, maximum 13% resting. And then my CPU is minimum as well. So it's going to clear up some of your CPU cycles and it's going to save you some RAM as well. So just go ahead and watch that video for 21H2, 21H1. Or if you've got 22H2, just go ahead and disable these services over here. Alright guys, for the next step, get your CPU optimization folder and then just drag this last file onto your desktop and then I just want to show you what it is. So it's this is going to apply certain settings to your registry. So it's going to disable power throttling, it's going to disable or it's going to disable network throttling, it's going to adjust system responsiveness. Um, and then game scheduling it changes your affinity, uh, your background, your clock rate, your GPU priority, priority scheduling category, etc. Blah blah blah. Just trust me, guys. This will optimize things nicely for you. So just go ahead, and then you can click on merge. I've already done it, but I'll just do it again just to show it's safe. Boom. Okay. So then, once that's done you can restart your system and when, once you restart your system just go ahead and delete that and you can delete the cpu optimization folder as well because we're done with that right. and seeing that we've done something in the registry i didn't add it to that registry folder because i did say i'd come back to it for those of you that are interested in disabling windows defender this is for you so what you're going to do is you're going to type in windows key and r 
top in ridge edit and then let me just go right back to the beginning let's just close this off sorry it's going to be a second there guys right so just in fact just do this So once you're at the beginning, computer, just go to HK Local Machine, click on that, go to Software, and in Software, go to Policies, go to Microsoft, and then Windows Defender, and then you will not have a folder called Spynet. So just click on this, go select New Key, and then once you select a new key, rename it and call it spinet and in spinet what you want to do is create a new d word 32 bit value and once you've done that rename it to spinet reporting like i did here no spaces capital s capital n capital r and then what you want to do is modify this to a value of three once that's done press ok restart your system and what you're going to notice is that windows defender is no longer running and then if you want to re-enable windows defender you just got come back here and then uh, you modify it and you give it a value of zero restart your system and what you're going to see is windows defender is running again so guys yeah the reason i like to disable windows defender is because i want maximum performance in my cpu and windows defender obviously does still some of your ram and cpu cycles that's why i disable it and i don't have any problems merry christmas all right for the next step what you're going to be doing is disabling startup services disabling high precision event timer as well as setting system configuration to the maximum amount of our cores um, the video has been long so i'm going to breeze through this quickly so just go to Windows option uh, system configuration and then what you're going to do is go to boot advanced options and then tick number of processes and then yeah select the highest number of your processes click ok press apply and then you can press e exit and then you can restart your system i'm not going to restart my system because i've already set that and then next thing that we're going to do is device manager so just type click on your windows icon type in device manager and we'll be disabling uh, our precision event timer so just under system devices find high precision event timer just right click on it and i've already disabled it but just go ahead and disable device i'm not going to get into technical details but this really, uh, this will help you with your performance a little bit on your CPU. And then the next one is just right click on your taskbar, go to task manager, go to startup, and then any of the programs in here, just make sure that it's disabled. So if it's enabled, just right click it and then click on disable. Finally, guys, we reached the end of the video. So what I'm going to say here is bonus steps, bonus advice, if you've only got 8 gigs of RAM on your system, I highly recommend upgrading to 16 gigs. It's going to put less pressure on your CPU. It's going to be able to load data quicker from your hard drive to your CPU, causing less bottlenecks. Other than that, watch a video on YouTube for your particular CPU and laptop brand. Find out how to open up your system, repaste your CPU. It's also another little bonus CPU optimization, so to speak. But the video is done. Thank God this took forever. So guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please smash the like button. If you haven't subbed to channels yet, come on, man. Please sub. Other than that, guys, have a good day. It's people like you. Cheers.